It's an honor to be here with you all today at the University of Havana, a center of learning for nearly 300 years. By comparison, the country I serve, Canada, is celebrating its 150th birthday next July. So I want to thank the university for making us feel young again. I'd like to thank the university's rector, Gustavo Cobrero Suarez, for having me. And thanks as well to each of you for taking the time to be here today. I appreciate your interest, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing your questions in a few minutes. And of course, I have to acknowledge a very special guest and a good friend who is here with us today, President Raul Castro. Thank you, President Castro, for the warm welcome you have extended to Sophie, to me, to our entire delegation, and through us, uh, to the people of Canada. As many of you know, the historical connection between the Trudeau and Castro families reaches back many decades. Canada was, along with Mexico, the only country in the Western Hemisphere to maintain diplomatic relations with Cuba following the revolution in the late 1950s. It's that strong and enduring connection that set the stage for my father's visit during his time as Prime Minister. He, my mother, and my youngest brother, Michel, came to Havana for an official state visit in 1976. Now, I was four years old at the time, which meant that I was still too young to really know what I was missing out on, but I was old enough to be jealous that my brother got to go to the sunshine and I didn't. I've had the chance since then to visit Cuba on my own a few times, and I learned firsthand why my parents always spoke so highly, both of this place and mostly of its people. And now, as Prime Minister, I understand to an even greater degree why it's critical that Canada and Cuba maintain their close relationship. First and foremost, open and respectful relationships serve our people. Last, last year, trade between Canada and Cuba was worth more than a billion dollars with much room to grow. The kind of cooperation that leads to a stronger economic growth, the kind of growth that back home in Canada builds a better future for everyone, not just the wealthiest citizens. Strong relationships like the one between Canada and Cuba also remind us that friends speak openly and honestly with each other. I'm grateful that President Castro and I have developed the kind of relationship where we can discuss issues candidly and respectfully, whether we're talking about governance, human rights, climate change, or gender equality. That's how progress happens. And finally, close relationships with other countries and cultures also help expose us to different perspectives and way of, ways of life, making all of our lives richer. C'est particulièrement important pour les Canadiens parce qu'ils considèrent la diversité comme une grande source de force. Ils savent que notre pays est fort non pas en dépit de ces différences, mais bien à cause d'elles. Au Canada, nous croyons que chaque personne mérite non seulement une vraie chance, mais une chance égale de réussir. Nous croyons que les opportunités qui s'offrent à chacun ne devraient pas être déterminées par l'endroit où vous êtes né, la langue que vous parlez, la religion que vous pratiquez, ou encore qui vous choisissez d'aimer. En fait, Ce n'est pas ça qui compte. Ce qui compte, c'est votre détermination à travailler fort pour aider, aider à bâtir un pays meilleur que celui qui vous a été légué par vos parents. Ce qui compte, c'est que vous aidiez à protéger les choses qui nous unissent plutôt que de s'attarder à ce qui nous divise. Et, d'après mon expérience, personne ne comprend mieux ça que vous, les jeunes. You see, I'm incredibly fortunate not only to serve as Prime Minister to my country, 
but I am also the minister for you. That means I have the chance to meet with young people all the time, whether it's through events like this one or through Canada, uh, the Prime Minister's Youth Council, a group of young Canadians in their teens and 20s who help me make sure that our government takes into account how policy will affect young people like them. And that focus on young people is really important to me personally. I don't buy the argument that young people are the leaders of tomorrow. I'm much more interested in making sure that young people are empowered today, that you are leaders right now in your communities, in your country, in your world. That's true in Canada, and it's certainly true here in Cuba, too. Young people already lead with the words you say, with the choices you make, with how you look to help and support your family and friends, with the hard work you do in schools and your communities to make your country a better, more welcoming, more successful place for everyone. That's what leadership is all about. It's about finding an opportunity to make a difference and going for it. And you don't need to wear a suit and tie to do it. I know that you're all capable of doing big, important things right now. And if you do it wearing a t-shirt that says 99% diseño cubano, even better. After all, this is the country where innovation and creativity is at the heart of everything you do. Every day, Cubans bring to life the spirit of resolver. I know that Cuba's young people, young women and men just like you, will help to shape not just a country, but a world that we can all be proud of. One of the things that has always impressed me most during my visits to Cuba is how passionately you celebrate Cuban culture. Whether it's your local artists or musicians or writers, the respect that you have for those who help tell the Cuban story is genuinely inspiring. I was reminded of that yesterday when I visited the Jose Marti Memorial. I was reminded of that last night and we enjoyed a fabulous performance by the young women of Camerata Romeo in the beautiful St. Francis Basilica. The pride that you have in what makes you uniquely you can serve as a lesson for the whole world, including for Canada. En même temps, le Canada comprend que nous sommes en position de tendre la main aux autres, notamment à nos amis et partenaires cubains. C'est pourquoi nous sommes engagés à poursuivre notre travail en matière de développement que nous savons peut faire une réelle différence. Ici à Cuba, cela inclut des programmes de formation pour les vérificateurs. Alors que le gouvernement cubain continue d'accroître la transparence et l'ouverture, ce genre de programme est utile pour aider à améliorer la reddition des comptes. Cela inclut aussi du soutien pour les agriculteurs, pour les propriétaires de petites entreprises et pour les co coopératives dans les quatre provinces dans l'est de Cuba qui, à leur tour, pourront offrir de la nourriture plus saine et plus sécuritaire aux citoyens de Cuba. But of all the links between our two countries, I think the most significant ones exist not by way of commercial or development ties, but through one-on-one, person-to-person -on -one, -person connections. We see this in the tremendous flow of tourists from Canada to Cuba. Canadians account for more than 40% of all visits to Cuba, making 1.3 million visits every year. We Canadians do love winter, but after a couple of months of minus 30 degrees Celsius, the great weather here in Cuba is always very attractive mostly the warmth of the welcome that we get everywhere we go on this beautiful island. Academic exchanges are another way that Canadians and Cubans can come together to learn and work side by side. 
whether it's through the Canadian Studies Center and universities and institutes across Cuba, including right here in the University of Havana, or through the network of academic exchanges between our post-secondary institutions, young people in Cuba and in Canada are forging relationships that will last a lifetime. We will all be better for those exchanges of culture, language, ideas, and friendship. Before I wrap up, I do want to say a few words about the work that our government is doing at home because it'll sound familiar to many of you here in Cuba. We're working hard to build a better future for all Canadians, so we will invest in building an economy that works for everyone. And in everything that we do, our government will stay true to Canadian values, values of inclusion, honestly, honesty, hard work, fiscal prudence, and generosity of spirit. Now, I've been talking for a long time, and I know that you have questions for me, and I'm really looking forward to hearing them and answering them. But I hope that in these short words, I've been able to give you a better sense of why the Canada-Cuba relationship is so important to us, so important to me. It truly is a special friendship, and I will do everything I can to continue to move it forward. But I hope you know that you all have an important stake, an important role in this friendship. Canada and Cuba will continue to accomplish much together, but we won't be able to do it without the help of active and engaged young people like you. So let's get to work. <laughs>